In today's video, I'm gonna be taking this mid-century clock and cleaning it up for our house, actually. We're gonna be keeping this. You can see that there's quite a bit of tarnish on it. There's some rust, the mechanism doesn't work. But this did not go as planned. And at one point, I even stopped recording because I was certain that I had ruined it. But stay tuned, you'll see what I mean. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. So having a look at the back here, you can see that the mechanism says made in Germany, but the clock itself is actually Canadian made. The mechanism at this point does not work and I'll be taking it apart to see if I can figure out what's going on with it. There's a ton of tarnish on this and even though the wooden parts are in fairly good condition, you've got some typical signs of aging. There's some paint splatter here and there, some dings. There is some evidence of prior repairs and you know, just overall it needs a really good cleaning. There's some mildew on some of the wooden sections. The face itself has quite a bit of tarnish on it and you can actually see the name here, Snyder. Now I did a little search online and this particular clock is very similar even though this one is electric. I found out some really cool stuff about the Snyder Clock Corporation and actually this was interesting that all of the battery operated movements from the 60s and 70s were not quartz type movements. They were balance wheel movements um, from a large C or D in this case, flashlight battery. Okay, so we need to talk about this clock. now. Anybody that has ever flipped furniture or done any sort of project really, um, things don't always go as planned, but it's different when you're doing it for yourself versus something that you want to share with the world. This video is a little bit different because I'm basically gonna be going through what I like to call the five stages of a flip gone wrong. This is brass plated rods with solid walnut accent pieces. So basically my first step here is just taking everything apart. Now my initial plan for this was to just clean up these wooden pieces. That was what I wanted to do. I didn't want to have to redo the entire clock, but that didn't go as planned. We're going to talk about the first stage of a flip gone wrong and that is what I like to call confidence. <laughs> Where you think, okay, this is a super easy project, this should be no problem. Um, I'm going to whip this out in, you know, a day at the most. I really thought this was going to be a piece of cake. But this one here you can see has a pretty bad crack that was somewhat repaired at one point and we'll talk about that one a little bit later on. Thankfully all of the round ones are in good condition, just pretty dirty, but nothing that has to be repaired. I really wanted to see if I could get this mechanism moving again. Uh, the previous owner told us that it wasn't working and there's a couple of things that stand out as to why that probably is the case. First of all, the plastic case was cracked and the way you have to insert the battery, it seems like it was likely an issue someone tried to pull the battery out and snapped the case off. These hands are pretty flimsy and a little bit bent, but I really wanted to try to save them so I was trying to be careful taking these off. Once I had this free, I could have a better look here and you can see that the leads for the battery are super corroded, especially this one here on the bottom, it's actually green. And this is that area where it was split. Now this is a problem because it's interfering with the contact of the battery. So I'm just going to pop this off and I used a little bit of epoxy to glue the crack back together. So I need to clean some things up here. This is a formula that is usually pretty safe for plated metal. So plated jewelry or furniture hardware. In this case, I'm using it to clean off some of the components here. And basically you just line a container with tin foil and you use equal parts baking soda and salt and add some hot water. It's gonna be a bit of a fizzy noise when the water first hits it. And basically you just plop your components in and let them soak. I really like this method for plated metal that is tarnished but not terribly rusted. 
This isn't going to get rid of rust. If there's some surface dirt and a little bit of tarnish, it actually does a pretty good job of getting it off. I'm just using a non-abrasive pad here and you can see the dirt that's coming off. Trying to be super careful with these hands because they're so flimsy. So I'm just rubbing very lightly. This has sat for about four minutes, roughly four to five minutes. And all that dirt and tarnish is coming right off. So there's quite a difference here. As you can see, the one on the top hasn't been cleaned yet and the one on the bottom has. You can still see a little bit of that patina, which is nice, but that terrible tarnish is mostly gone. If these were solid brass, it would be different. I could just go in with a polish like Brasso and scrub all that crap off. But because it's plated, I have to be a little bit careful. Even though I've gotten a lot of the corrosion off of these battery leads, and you can see them here, they have to meet up with these two little sections here. I still don't know yet if this is gonna work. So I'm just using that same solution to try to clean off the face and the rest of this section here. I didn't have anything large enough to soak this in, or at least I didn't at that point. And I just wanted to see how this would clean up and it's taking all of the dirt off, but it's not really doing a whole lot about the tarnish. Flipping it over to the back side and being a little bit more aggressive, you can see that a bit more is coming off, but it's not touching the rust at all. And there is quite a bit of rust on this. So eventually I had to switch tactics and I moved over to using Brasso. Knowing that there's a good chance it was going to take off a fair bit of the plating as well as that tarnish, and you can see that's exactly what's happening. Stage number two is what I like to call, oh and that's when nothing major has happened yet, but you can tell things are just not going to go as planned. It's just the point where you realize, okay, this is going to be more time consuming than I thought. I am pretty miffed about having to remove a lot of the brass plating on this. Even though I can spray paint it, and a lot of times when people restore these things, that's what they end up doing. They either replate them if they have this set up or they basically scrub all the old crud off and paint them. So I'm just giving these a cleaning with some Odie Safer solvent. I want to see what these are going to look like just cleaned without being refinished. And I don't know, they just still seem kind of dull looking. Like they just don't really have much life to them. But I set them aside to dry and I'm going to move on to this now. I found something in the basement, a big piece of foam that was almost the perfect size for this and I decided that I was going to try to see if I could heat up some of this old crud that remained, make things a little bit easier for myself. Right here, <laughs> can you think of any reason why I should not have done that? Because I didn't at the time, didn't even give it a second thought. I had used the hot water on that painted area of the face previously um, with no issues. So for some reason, I thought it would be totally okay to submerge it in very hot water. Well, this is doing a pretty good job on the rest of this, but when I pick up the face again, you're going to see where things take another turn. And it's not apparent immediately. In fact, I didn't even notice it was happening while I was cleaning. So if you haven't guessed what the problem is yet, I'll give you a hint. This area here that is kind of light, that is paint. And when you expose it to really hot water, <laughs> bad things happen. Now you can see just past the three, there's a little mark here. And that is where some of the paint had started to lift. It's not terrible yet. And I actually set it aside and I went back to cleaning this part. But when I picked it up again and went to wipe it dry, almost all of the paint came off. And that is where I stopped recording. And at this point, I was squarely in phase three of embarrassment. I stopped recording. I decided, no, you know, 
You guys that have been with me for a while, you guys know that I don't mind sharing when things go wrong in my videos. It's part of the process and I feel like it's weird to hide that. And I wasn't really even sure about putting this video out anyway because it's not a piece of furniture, but yeah, I stopped recording for a bit and was just angrily <laughs> trying to get this done. I ended up getting the majority of the rust off and almost all of the tarnish. But of course it had exposed the chrome rods underneath, so I'm adding some gold metallic spray paint. When it comes to vintage pieces, whether it's decor or furniture, these things are always subjective and there's a lot of people that say, oh my gosh, you've ruined the value by redoing it. And in some cases that's true, but in this case, at least from my perspective, that rust was eating through the metal and actually destroying the piece and it had to come off. You can definitely replate metal, I just don't have the setup to do it. So I did what I thought was best with what I had to work with. This is a piece from my own home. And even though I was really, really frustrated at this point, I started recording again and I'm opting to refinish the walnut pieces. I just don't like how dingy they look. There's just no life to them. Walnut is one of my favorite woods and I just, I didn't like that you couldn't really see the grain very well. This is that one piece that had the previous repair and normally when someone does a terrible job of repairing like this, I like to try to separate it and do it again. But there is absolutely no movement here and my fear is that if I try to rip this apart, I'm going to damage it and end up having to replace it completely. So I'm opting to just sand it smooth. I'm going to add some walnut wood filler into the cracks, let it dry and then just do another light sanding and just try to camouflage this. It may be apparent by this point, but yes, I am in stage four, which is acceptance. This doesn't necessarily mean I'm happy with the way things are going, but I have to keep going, which means I have to accept what went wrong. I'm using General Finishes Gel Stain in the color Nutmeg, which is going to give these walnut pieces, which are all slightly different in color, a more uniform color. This is a lovely stain for mid-century pieces. And I don't stain walnut a lot, but when I do, this is definitely my go-to. So we've gone from confidence to oh shit, to um, absolute embarrassment to acceptance of the situation. And now we're in stage five, which is rebirth. And this is the point where you're doing your absolute best to move forward and turn this into something, maybe not necessarily what you initially intended, but you know, trying to make the best of it, basically. I really wanted to reuse the original hands, but because we couldn't get the original mechanism working properly, we kept getting little bursts of energy, but it just wasn't running smoothly and it was quite loud. Uh, we opted to replace the mechanism with something more modern and quiet. The problem is the old hands do not fit on the new mechanism. So I had to find replacement hands and I found these ones. They're a little bit large, but I can cut them down. If you're wondering how I repaired the face after all the paint came off, I went out and found this Trem Cloud Rust Paint in Recreational White, which is a nice off-white gloss paint. Taped <laughs> the face off, sprayed that on, and then hand painted all of the numbers and lines back on. I do apologize that I don't have footage of that. I was having a hissy fit. <laughs> you know, I learned a lot throughout this process, what to do, what not to do. My hope in putting out this video, even though some of you might find it boring compared to some of my furniture flips, is that this might help someone else in terms of what to do and what not to do. A few benefits of having a new mechanism. One, it's quieter. You've got the second hand doing a continuous sweep rather than that tick, tick, tick. I did try the black hands on first and I didn't really like it, so I ended up taking them off and spray painting the two large ones gold, left the second hand black. And you can see here the walnut pieces are all kind of one color. If I flip those larger ones around, they're lighter on the other side, so I gave myself some options. I could either have it all uniform or we could do kind of like a two-tone look. And these are the hands painted gold, which I like much better with the black second hand.
I thought this was going to be a quick one day flipperoo. It was not. This took me a couple days, mainly because I got mad at myself and, you know, stopped temporarily. But looking back at what I started with, how rusted and corroded, tarnished, dirty, it was all of the kind of hassle and decisions I had to make, I think it was worth it in the end. This piece is going in our dining room. We have a mid-century table and chair set made out of walnut. We've got a credenza that's made out of teak, but the teak actually has two different wood tones on it. I think this is gonna blend in really nicely. I think that I left just the right amount of patina on the clock face so that this doesn't look like a modern reproduction like you would find on Etsy. But it also doesn't look like something I pulled out of a dumpster. <laughs> it was unfortunate that I had to repaint the face where I had accidentally removed all of the paint, but you know what, it turned out okay. I ended up finding a paint that was very, very similar. I found hands that were very, very similar. And overall, I think this is a great addition. We did run into one little issue though the next morning. I woke up, came downstairs, and of course immediately had to look at it. And this is what I found. And this is who caused it. <laughs> Why is your head all wet? Did you just get a bath from Willie? These are the mittens responsible for that. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.